Okay. Welcome back, everyone. In this chapter, we are going to discuss about the directory services in Windows Server 2019. Okay. What is a DC? DC is domain controller. It is a server that is responsible for secure, securely authentication, authenticating users to access resources in an organization's network. So it's responsible for the security of authentications and assigning the privileges, authentication and authorization. Assigning privileges is authorization. Okay. In Windows NT, there was one DC per domain configured as the PDC, primary domain controller. And all the other domain controllers acted as backup domain controller, BDC. In Windows Server 2019, there are no primary and backup approaches used. Instead, numbers are used next to the DC to identify priorities in it. DC1, DC2, according to the priority. We'll learn about this in the lab. So what is a domain? Logically, is a domain is a logical, logical grouping of users, computers, peripherals, network services. When you install your domain, when you add domain controller, that's what we, what we do in the lab, you will be asked to give a domain name. You look here, by default, we have duati.local, or, or this is what's given to us, for example, by Microsoft, okay? Sometimes they use Contoso. They used to use Contoso before. And then you have the options. Do you want to add, to create a new forest or add a new domain name in existing forest? Okay. Or add a domain controller to an existing domain. But what is a forest? Forest in real life is consists of trees. In Active Directory, forest consists of one tree domain or a collection of three domains. So we call it a forest. So when you create a domain, the first domain you create is the first domain in your forest. Okay. It's called the root domain of the forest. The first domain in a, in a forest is the root domain of the forest. So a forest is a domain too. So to set up a forest in Windows Server 2019, first we create the first domain controller. Okay. And that will be our new forest root domain name. Child domain. Let's see here. We have duati.local. And we have ittraining.local. These are both three domains. But duati.local is a forest that is the root domain. Uh, from that, programming.duati.local is part of duati.local. So it's a child domain. Okay. Like we say, support.microsoft.com, the domain is Microsoft. The child domain is support. Okay. To set up a child domain, you can use the Active Directory Domain Services Configuration Wizard, and this will be add a domain to controller to an existing domain. We are going to do this in the lab many times. Active Directory Domain Services is not hard, but you really, yeah, the first thing is try to understand the concept. First of all, it's hierarchical, okay? Uh, so we said that we all agree duati.local is the root domain. And it's actually 
the forest because it's the first domain in the forest. It's the root domain of the forest. In fact, this is the machine that hosts Duwati.local is a DC domain controller. Okay, so that machine is the active domain, is the active directory domain server or system. Role is being installed on that server. And it was promoted to a domain controller. Once you do that, Active Directory domain services assigns or automatically assign five master operation roles. These are master schema and domain naming master. And these are forest wide operations master roles. Okay. While the remaining three, such as RID or relative identifier, primary domain controller, PDC, emulator, and infrastructure master are three domain-wide operations master roles. So these are the five roles, okay? While the schema master and domain naming master manages the Active Directory schema, the read-write copy takes care uh, takes care that only one unique domain in the forest, on, okay? So you don't have repetition. Okay, you have more servers with the same domain name that cannot happen in the forest, okay? Also, RID takes care of assigning the SID. Okay, the SID, we will talk about it. This is the security identifier. Each object has SID. When you create a user, it will have an SID. If you delete that user and then create another user with the same name, you will have a different SID, okay? even if he has the same name, even the same person. Okay, so SID is always associated with the original object or the original user. The PDC emulator deals with the password updates, and the infrastructure master keeps track of the changes made to the other domain objects. So now here we have our domain. Okay, we have a three domain Duwati, and we have training dot local. Okay, the three domain is Duwati. And it is actually the master scheme. And the domain naming master in the whole forest is Duwati. Duwati.local and training.local are both three domains in the forest. And as such, they have their own RID masters, PDC emulators, and infrastructure. OK? So what is the name of this forest? Duwati. Domain versus working group. Working group is not scalable. Here you have a peer-to-peer -peer network. Only if you have a small network, they want to share a resource, printer, but it does not provide you with real security and authorization power, backups and all these things, okay? In Active Directory, there is a trust relationship, okay, uh, between and, uh, the, uh, the domain controller and between domains as well. Okay, so you have a trust relationship between your domain controllers, okay, that are in the forest. Okay, so first you create the domain, then you configure your computer to join the domain. Once your computer joins the domain, it is part of the domain. And, uh, and uh, the security account manager in the, the, the local computer will trust the Active Directory authentication mechanism which the domain controller has, okay, in Kerberos, in a domain controller. Hence, the user is being authenticated by a DC in a network and not from the local SAM. SAM will authenticate when you, when you use your computer. You log in, right? You are not connected to a network. You still have authentication. Now you join the domain. 
the domain, your computer will trust the domain. Then the domain will give you new username and password where you can access the domain and your computer. So you have to trust the domain in, able, in order to be able to join. Okay. We have two types of functional levels. We have the forest functional level and the domain functional level, DFL and FFL. The FFL controls which version of Windows Server can run in the domain controller of the forest. And at the same time, it enables the available capabilities across all domains in a forest. In contrast, DFL controls which versions of Windows Server can run in domain controller of that domain. Also, it enables available capabilities in that domain only. For Windows Server 2019, DFL and FFL uh, should be updated to Windows Server 2008 level at least, because Windows, the old version of Windows 2003 is no longer supported. Okay. Nowadays, we use Windows Server 2019 for us. To check the domain and forest functional levels, we can follow these tasks as we will do in the lab. Okay. So I'm gonna just go to the next slide. Here we have, we can understand the naming convention or namespace. So here we have our forest Duwati. We have Duwati the local. Then we have child domain programming.duati.local. And we have a three domain IT training.local. Okay. So duati.local represents a forest and a root domain at the same time. Why? Why it's a root domain? Because it has a child domain. What's its child domain? Programming.local. Okay. Duwati.local, ITT training are three domains in the, the in the mentioned forest. So they are both three domains in the in our forest. Okay. The, the child domain and the tree domain share a common name space within the forest, which we have already mentioned. We call this contagious namespace. Like child, parent, you know, child. We have something called sites when you are designing. Imagine you are headquarters. You are a bank and you have a branch. Far away, you want to put some servers there. One server belongs to HR, one server belongs to finance. They need to communicate with each other. They don't need to send all the traffic to headquarters, come back, and then the telecom company will charge you. So you have to have a site there. Site will provide high speed connection. Okay. So here we have a physical and logical topologies. So a domain represents the logical topology, whereas the site represents the physical topology. So the site actually represents the physical location of the computer network. We can also need, or we can do replication uh, to synchronize the common directory partitions along, among all your domain controllers. They need to be up to date with each other. So they need to be synchronized. How do we make sure that they are centralized by proper using of replication? Okay. Replication is a set of communication paths through, through which the DC's replication data travels. In Active Directory, what do we have? We have objects, we have classes, we have attributes. And these are what builds your schema. Schema is the whole database for your Active Directory. 
Some people call it schema. I, I like to call it schema, call it whatever you like. But it's schema, okay, or schema. All right. The class represents the object type. The attribute, attribute represents the characteristics of the object. So the Active Directory stores the objects that are identified by their classes and attributes. Then the schema represents the model that contains the roles of that, the type of object that can be stored in Active Directory. And then the replication can synchronize the schema among all DCs in the class. This have any question here? Nowadays, you are part of the network, right? But not necessarily you want to log in from certain location. Oh, okay, if you travel, if you drive to another city, you cannot log in. This is not acceptable, right, anymore. So uh, the Active Directory take care of that. And they allow you with some uh, facilities to make sure that you are getting proper authentication and proper authorization by using the username, passwords, OK? Microsoft has introduced Microsoft Passport, which enable users to authenticate without a password. It is based on the Fast ID Online or FIDO Alliance standards and consists of two components, a single sign-in service and a wallet service. So it has two factors, it is secure. From that, we can deduce that Microsoft Passport is a two-factor, as I just told you. Always with authentication, you need more than one password. Password alone is more than, more than one factor. Password alone is one factor. So you need another method, so it's a, another factor. When you go for some, like you go some places to apply for something, sometimes they ask you for two types of ident identifications, right? identification. Same thing here. If you want some authorization to be secure, it, it, it's better to have at least two factors of identification. Okay, so Microsoft uses FEDO. Okay. How do we install Active Directory domain services? It's easy. You go to the server manager, we will do this in the lab many times, I promise you, inshallah. You go to the server manager, add roles and services, and then you choose uh, the option for Active Directory Domain Services, okay? You select the role. The role is installing the ADDS role. And then after you install, you need to promote. I will show you how to do that. Once you promote to a domain controller, then you enter if it is a new forest or it's uh, another uh, server in the domain. That's what we will do, inshallah, hopefully, next class. Or next, yeah, in our next first lab, we will do that, okay? We will install a Windows server, then we will add the active guide. So these are the steps. Once you do the promote, it will uh, you will follow the wizard, and everything is okay. You will not get any red flags. Uh, you need to enter the Active Directory restore mode DSRM password. So just go with the flow. Go with the template. Next, next, next. Okay, it will ask you, do you want to reboot? You just click yes. It, it, it needs to reboot. By the way, we are doing this on a virtual machine, on the Azure virtual machine. It will also check if you have all the prerequisites, your machine is matching, capable, compliant with the Windows Server 2019. Then your server will restart and everything is good, life is good. Okay. 
now I will stop here and we'll come back to your questions if you have any questions.